Spider-Man 2 is certainly a strange game. It came out when video games based on films were accepted to be bad, but did a lot of things right. It wasn't perfect, but was enjoyed by many people. Batman Arkham Asylum is also a strange game. It came out when video games based on Batman were accepted to be bad, but did a lot of things right. It wasn't perfect, but was enjoyed by many people. Now here we are with the amazing Spider-Man game, which can only be described as a blend between the two. So if you take two great games and smash them together, it can't be bad, right? Well, let's take a look. Oh, and I have the 360 of the game, so that's the one I'll be looking at. Well, maybe I'll have a look at the DS version too. I haven't played a Spider-Man game since Spider-Man 3, and despite hearing that some of the games were slightly above mediocre, never had any interest in checking them out. Once I heard that The Amazing Spider-Man was going back to free roaming though, I had to play it. It was by Beanox, who made Shattered Dimensions and Edge of Time, so I had no idea whether or not they could make a sandbox game. Because many companies can't. Before that though, I suppose I should look at the story. The game starts out after the events of the film with Gwen Stacy showing Peter Parker around Oscorp. I haven't actually seen the film, so spent most of the game piecing together what happened during the film, so now that's pretty much ruined for me. I was surprised to find out that the game came out before the film. So anyone who played the game day one would have had the same experience. It's nice they wanted an original story after the film, but they kind of messed up with the timing. Anyway, while looking at evil monsters and talking about how great everything is, everything becomes terrible and the evil monsters escape. One of them bites Gwen and starts an affection across the city. The rest of the game pretty much involves saving the city from this evil. Overall, the story is exactly what you would expect from a comic book game, but there are a nice few surprises in there. The dramatic moments don't really work, but it's also nice to see that Spider-Man's dialogue is actually pretty entertaining. Most Spider-Man games have horrible dialogue with just awful, awful jokes. I know that's kind of the character, but here they kind of work. The game is split pretty much 50-50 between story missions and side missions in free roam. The story missions for the most part are decent and feature spider puzzles, spider fights and spider stealth. The spider puzzles are all very simple and are just there to distract the player really and to make the levels go on a bit longer, nothing too taxing on the old brain. The spider fights actually can be enjoyable which is rare for a comic book game, but can you guess the reason why they're fun though? Bingo! The combat rips off Batman Arkham Asylum. I would be lying if I said the combat here is as good as that game. It doesn't have the same flow and lacks combos, but it still works. You do feel like you're controlling Spider-Man rather than just a different sort of Batman, so I can't complain too much about it. Last of all is the spider stealth. While I feel the combat does enough to separate itself from Batman Arkham Asylum, the stealth doesn't. It's exactly the same only more basic as Spider-Man doesn't own any gadgets. Instead of hiding on weird statues, Spider-Mans can actually web anywhere on the ceiling. And if you get caught, you can just press LB to web retreat and hide in the shadows. This is so much better, as stealth is never perfect in video games, and these two mechanics take away a lot of the frustrations that a lot of stealth sections have. This game also lets you use stealth throughout the game rather than force it upon you in certain sections like Batman did. It would have been nice if there was a bit more you could do with enemies while in stealth, but it doesn't make him bad, it's just a bit lacking. Also, each story mission features collectibles that add a nice replay value to the levels, although I'm not sure everyone is into collecting everything as I was when I played it. Outside of the story missions has Spider-Man swinging about Manhattan in a large sandbox world. If you want, you can just swing straight to the next mission and be done with it. However, you're more likely to find something else to do. Oh my god, a person being mugged! I have to save them! Wait, is that a comic book up on that roof? An infected person? How can I, the great Spider-Man, just swing by without stopping to help? It would be unfair to call a lot of what you do in the city as missions, as most of it feels more like superhero busy work. Can you guess what game this style of sandbox is taken from? Bingo! The sense of maintaining a city is taken from Spider-Man 2. It worked then, and it works really well now. And it works for the same reason. Swinging around a Spider-Man is fun. You can swing in the Amazing Spider-Man by holding RT, and that's it. Spider-Man 2 had basic and advanced swinging, which meant more that swinging wasn't mindless. This made it good and enjoyable. Here what makes it good, however, is that 
you it's a more cinematic feel to swinging you jump from a building as spider-man he dives towards the ground everything goes blurry all around you at the last second you press rt and pull up flying upwards ready for the next swing it's pretty cool half the bosses also have the same kind of cinematic feel they're once again simple but who doesn't enjoy smashing up large robots the other half of the bosses I kind of like in an odd way. They're mutants and you just, you're fighting them normally. It's nice to have your own moveset be relevant with bosses even if fighting them is, of course, simple. The graphics vary from being impressive to bad. How could they take the lovely Emma Stone and turn her into a reject from The Sims 2? But the city looks good, as it is a sandbox and you are Spider-Man reaching large heights and swooping down. It's an impressive looking city, I have to admit. The camera might put people off too, it's the same as from the Edge of Time game, but it can be a pain when crawling around in the city and also pretty distracting when you first start playing this game. I had a bit of a problem with it at first, but if you hold on in there, you'll get used to it. Also, the more damage you take, the more worn your costume becomes. In Arkham Asylum, the Batman's costume got worn because the whole game takes place over one night and represented that Batman is going through a lot trying to take on all the insane criminals. Here, Spider-Man is just getting naked, which is disturbing. If kids are playing, it, that's not cool. Overall, you might be able to guess what my main problem with this game is. It's simple. You might think that the shameless rip-offs would be the main problem, but I find it hard to care, honestly. I don't work at Rocksteady or Treyarch, and there's nothing here that's out of place for the Spider-Man character, so who cares? Spider-Man 2 back in the day, so it was hard not to have this video just be a side-by-side -side comparison of this game and that game. I have to say, though, I think The Amazing Spider-Man is a better game. Spider-Man 2 had its problems with the story missions and sometimes combat was a bit boring and all that. But Spider Amazing Spider-Man actually fixes a lot of this and even though it has its own problem, I have to say this is a better game. As a game overall, I'm going to give The Amazing Spider-Man an 8 out of 10. I know it's an easy score to give but I can't give it any higher due to it being basic and I can't give it any lower because it's an enjoyable experience and it captures the essence of being Spider-Man in the same way Spider-Man 2 did all those years ago. To sum up, The Amazing Spider-Man is a bit better than Spider-Man 2, a bit better than Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, worse than Batman Arkham Asylum, definitely better than Spider-Man 3, and when it comes to Arkham City, well, maybe that's for another time. And real quick, the DS version is dull, with horrible combat, poor level design, and it's just awful all around. For fans of Web of Shadows and Shattered Dimensions for the DS, this is nothing like those games and absolutely avoid it at all costs. I'm not even going to give it a score, it's just awful.